So we talked a little bit about what the integral sign means, and now we're going to start doing integrals. So, for example, the integral between 1 and 5 of 2x plus 1 dx. All right, so visually what this means is if I had a line, kind of looks like this, 2x plus 1, between 1 and 5, I want to be finding the total area going on there. Okay, so we could figure out the lengths and the widths and chop it up and find the area underneath, but I'm just going to use calculus and the rule that we know to find the total area. So what I know is this is the same as if I take the antiderivative and plug in 5 and plug in 1. Now going back, that's what this particular rule is for. Okay, so from a to b of f of x, if you want the area underneath, you find the antiderivative and plug in the endpoints and find the difference. So that's just what we're doing here. Now, the antiderivative here is, well, first of all, if you take 2x, you raise the power, it'll be x squared. And then I just check, if I was to derive again, would that take care of the number in the front? So if I drop the 2 in front, actually, that would just be fine. The 1 is going to be 1x. Otherwise, we could just write it as x, because when you derive an x, it just drops and you have the number in front. Okay, and now I know that when we were doing integrals, we would always put a plus c. But in this case, if you think about it, both of these will have a plus c in the end, and they'll subtract away. So we really, when we're doing definite integrals, integrals that have definite beginnings and endpoints, we don't have to put the plus c. So this is going to turn out to be 5 squared plus 5, and we take away 1 squared plus 1. So 25 plus 5 is 30. 1 plus 1 is 2. The total area under the curve there is going to be 28. Now we could verify that if we wanted to. If we go over to 1, what's the height of this box? Well, it's going to be 3 tall and 4 wide. So the area of the rectangular box is 12. This is 11 overall, so this section here is 8. And then this section here would be 4 still. 8 times 4 is 32, but then you divide by 2, you get 16. Add those areas together, you get 28. So really, when given the choice, I would just practice your integrals. Don't go back to chopping it up and trying to find area. For example, one of the reasons you don't want to do that is because you might have to do it under a curve instead of just straight lines. So find the area of x squared dx. Find it from 0 to 3 and give this a shot. I'm going to start off by just writing out. We know this is going to be the same as f of 3 minus f of 0. So I'd pause the video and try to figure it out. Okay, so first step. Antiderivative of x squared is x cubed with a one-third in front. So this is going to be one-third three cubed minus one-third zero cubed. This is going to disappear because it's just zero. And then we think 3 cubed is 9 times 3, which is 27 all over 3. In this case, this is going to be really nice. 27 over 3 is just 9. Okay, now let's do another example together here. The integral from 2 to 10 of 1 over x dx. All right, this is going to be the same as the antiderivative at 10, taking away the antiderivative at 2. So the question is, what is the antiderivative for this integral? Well, this is going to be ln of x. 1 over x, when you antiderive, should just get you ln of x, because the derivative of ln of x is 1 over x. So this is what you'll get, the ln of 10 minus the ln of 2. 
No, now you could find the decimal by plugging it in a calculator, but there is an old rule that we learned back in pre-calc and probably algebra, where when you subtract logs, it's the same as dividing the numbers inside one log. And so really overall, this is going to be an answer of ln of 5, um, which you can plug into your calculator and you could figure out. Next, you guys should try this now. Try, what is the integral from 0 to pi halves of sine of x dx? And just to give you some context here, sine goes like this. This is pi, so we're actually finding the area all the way up to the maximum of the sine. So I'll pause the video and give it a try. Okay, so this is going to be again the antiderivative of pi over 2 minus the antiderivative at 0. What is the antiderivative of sine of x? Well, remember the tower. Remember this way is integraling or antideriving. But when you reach the top, you have to cycle back down. And so this is going to be negative cosine. Let's clearly write this out. OK, now you notice the minus minus will turn into a plus. So cosine of pi over 2, when you think of the unit circle, pi over 2 is right here. The x value there is 0. So this is going to be 0. This is going to turn into a plus, and what is the cosine of 0? That's right here. That would be 1. So, amazingly, the area under the curve going to here is 1. So I'll leave you to think about this. What's the area if we were to do the integral from 0 to pi of sine of x dx? And similarly, what's the integral from 0 to 2 pi sine of x dx. So take a moment to think about this, try to get an answer, and then unpause the video. Okay, so for this first one on the left side, the full area here is going to be 2, because we know half of the interval is going to be 1, and this is symmetric, so it's going to be the same from this side and that side, so the answer is 2. Now the other one is a little tricky because if we went all the way across, remember our discussion that the area under here is positive and then the area under here is going to be negative, but because it's symmetrical, the area is going to be exactly the same, just opposite, and so the area here is zero. Now you could go back to doing this right here, but a lot of this stuff you can actually figure out without the formulas if you are just thinking about how the graph works.